Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark, Nuts for Art, and I'm here with Louisa Hamachek. And we're going to go over uh, some maps that she wants to share with you about the Pacific Northwest once again. I know that has been requested, so Lou, you want to tell them what you want to share? Okay. So what I have here is the map I drew many years ago of the Nuclear Northwest, where I accentuate the river systems. Uh, here's the Columbia River coming from Canada down to past Hanford nuclear reservation where they made plutonium uh, for atom bombs. And the Snake River has come in from Idaho and joins at Pasco, just below Hanford in the town of Pasco and right next to Richland. And below that is uh, um, in the Tri-Cities area is right here under Hanford, very close to an operating nuclear power plant called the Columbia Generating Station. That should be shut down because there's new fault lines been found very close and deep and not so deep. All different kinds of them are here. The 1872 big fault uh, earthquake that shook the whole northwest was from only 100 miles over this way mm. from Hanford was its epicenter and it keeps doing clusters of earthquakes. And so this um, operating nuclear power plant here, the Columbia Generating Station or CGS, um, could... <clears throat> have a meltdown and rupture and put radioactive waters that would go into the Columbia River past Portland right here, where the uh, Willamette River comes into the Columbia River is Portland. And then from Portland it goes past the old Trojan nuclear waste dump of the Trojan nuclear power plant that has been dismantled and blown up and mm. dismantled and broken down, but hidden right there, not hidden is the waste that has evidently gone to dry storage. But what happens if there's a flood? What happens if uh, there's an earthquake? Because from here, just a bit offshore, this is going to be the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake that's going to make a tsunami slosh the shore within 15 minutes of the earthquake. Wow. While people are all getting up from underneath broken down buildings and trying to escape, they can't quite make better and start running. So right up river to right near there will come the tsunami up the Columbia River to right around Trojan stored nuclear waste. But then farther up here is the deep 10 mile down earthquake going to reach under the Cascades. They used to say this Cascadia subduction zone earthquake like five years ago would be muffled by this uh, line of mountains known as the Cascades. How far in are these from here to there? <laughs> Like, how far is the coast to the Cascades? Uh, maybe about 150 miles, I think. Okay. Okay. And um, and so, because it's like an hour that way from Eugene to the okay. coast, an hour that way to the top of the mountain. Okay. So it's about 60 miles either way. From, okay. This is the Valley of the Willamette. That's the ever, evergreen, beautiful valley with uh, Cascadia is all this Pacific Northwest of uh, ferns and cedars and, and uh, fir trees and stuff. And... Um, over this side, it's desert, and it's sagebrush all the way up to here, all the way up to there. And this is the Okanagan Mountains. Here's the Canadian border. And here comes the Columbia down here, and it does have gold mine pollution up here, and then comes so into America. Lou, do you know, are you learning a lot about the Fukushima, like the nuclear plume that's along the west coast of this whole, do you know they're finding nuclear radiation all along this entire coast Well, let's now? do that on From a different... Fukushima? No, I don't, but let's... Okay. I don't know, but I bet so, and I, I think let's find out. We are, I'd love to have you do a video about that with your map. And I will. I'm I'll sure I'll find will. out about that for one of the next ones. So Thank you. So, what I want to show is I've become, been back to the Ukraine. While all this disturbance is going on about who owns parts of the Ukraine and the USSR and America and all the world is gesturing about who they support, about the insurgents or whatever they're called in the Ukraine of local people. I think, well, the Ukraine, that's where Chernobyl was. So it gets me the book, this one, from the uh, library. In, in, right, you in, talked uh, about that last night. Yeah, it's by Ella Yaroshinskaya about where she lived near Chernobyl. And she did uh, investigative research about why they were abandoned, these villages and towns, wow. and not warned about the radiation in the days after the nuclear power plant exploded and uh -huh. spewed all this radioactive particles all around the area. They should have been inside and not letting it touch them and get on them and inhaled. Mm -hmm. And it was a disaster that was not warned to the people. So my point is, let's not trust the people in America around Hanford. Let's look now at the town. So I okay. went to looking here. And I look at, where is Hanford? It's right there. 
Okay. Here's Oregon. Okay, I'm going to pull this back for a minute. Okay. And we're going to look at a map of Oregon. Okay. Okay, stand back a bit. Okay. And you'll see. That's Oregon. Here's uh, Oregon again. Oregon has... Okay. Here, I'll move it up like this. Oh, I know. You're going to These are this. the this uh, roads. These are this is a highway. Anything with fatness here is a big, fat traveling road. This is I-5. Okay. This is I-80. And right up here at the top over here, before it goes down the Columbia River to Portland, is Hanford right there. Oh, There's okay. Hanford right here. This little red dot right here. And you can and see... And Hanford's right here. Uh, no. Um, here, these are the Wallawa Mountains. Uh -huh. And so Hanford's right here. Right under, see here comes I I eighty, and you've come from the Midwest. Yeah, and you're coming in yeah, I've come Portland. up that way. Yeah. Yep. And so right here, where it hits the Columbia River, is right above it is Hanford because the Columbia has come like this and then goes okay. down and joins I eighty right there where it comes in. Okay. So we're going to go back to here, and here it is coming in. Okay. Here is the Columbia. They put so many dams; it's a big fat lake. Okay. So it we're used at to be a six river. minutes now, Lou. So let's All move right. on. All right. So okay, here we are. Okay. So now what we want to do is what Check I did was... Check out what she did. This is I brilliant. Took, okay, I took the book, had this map. This wonderful woman has put in a map of... It's in here. The map's in here. Okay. I know it is. I okay, here's it. the book and stuff. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Let's return to here. Here, we're all sort of focaccia up here. Hold on. That's that. Okay, now let's look here. Okay. Here's Hanford. Here comes the Columbia River from Canada. Uh-huh. In past Spokane, comes in here. Then we go around the Hanford Nuclear Reservation, a big Yeah, we hump. did that, yeah. And we're here. Okay. And then, so check out this, what she did with this map. Well, it doesn't match up to that one. Well, this is a hand-drawn map. Match, That's perfectly great. But it matches up to this one. Watch what she did here. I this is brilliant. I took the scale thing. I took this one out. The book on Chernobyl had these maps in here that showed the radiation and how it spread. Right. Um, and how uh, a couple of years later, it was here in the Ukraine and here. These are the same parts of the world, but here's the Pripyat River. Uh, Chernobyl, of course, is where it's the most radioactive. Right. It's where the village was and where the nuclear power right. plant that exploded. Split. Okay. This is 1991. It happened in 86. Wow. This is the radiation of cesium around there, and this is its cesium around here. Wow. So this is one country of called Belarus, right. or however you say it, Belarus or something. Belarus. And Belarus, I guess, but they spell it B Y E L O R U S S I A, and then over here is Russia, and here's Chernobyl. <laughs> Right there. Belarus, yeah. Yeah, well, that's because she calls it, we call it Belarus. She calls it Belarus because she's Russian. That's what they call it. That's right. And she's Ukrainian, and she's yeah, from Ukraine, which is this part, okay. below the Pripyat River. So not to so, put pressure on you, but I think we only have about five minutes left. All right. Like telling me 1340 Good. is the max time. All right. So look over here on this map. Okay. Okay, here we have the exploded nuclear power plant. Right, right down here, 70 miles away only was Kiev. That's the distance oh between Hanford Nuclear Power Plant operating <gasps> on a fault line and Pendleton, Oregon. And Pendleton is Oregon's favorite town of cowboys and the world of uh, great people, wonderful stuff, Pendleton. And, um, and Hanford's right there. That's the same distance. This affected a lot of people. So I'm matching up this uh, map with um, America and of and saying how far could it go and look at this okay can you, can you see this this gray part so you're putting it right on top of where hanford yeah, would this be out. this is like four years later the gray yeah. part is radio okay. radiation tons of it here near the power plant so i'm here. lining it up at the same scale that i blew it up at, at kinko's okay to the same scale here it says 50 miles and stuff look at this it could go like this, all to Portland. It could go, if I flipped it over and the wind was blowing this way to the northwest, let's say, it would go 100 miles this way. And um, if we look at that map, that's like 50 miles. So 100 miles from there would be Spokane right, right. there. The city of Spokane is 250,000 people. Look at how this map would do it. 
right to there. Wow. We'd be getting it going there if the wind was blowing that wow. way. Wow. And we flip it like this or like this or like this. Could it go downward towards us? Yes, but not very easily because there's the Cascade Mountains that oh, stopped it. Oh, okay. So it would be in the Columbia River that we're part of. So but Canada it affect would be it super screwed probably. Yeah, look at this map place. now. Now we're going to look at this one, okay? Yeah. All right. So here we have Vancouver Island. That shows that the bottom of Vancouver Island is the top of the earthquake. Yeah. Okay. And then it's here's the top of uh, America and the bottom of Canada, this dotted line. Mm -hmm. Here, this is the Columbia River coming in, that arc mm. that I showed you in my yeah. map. Yeah, yeah. Let me pull this map out. There's, here's my map showing it. Are uh, Columbia in from Canada arcing around and around? Yeah. Okay, so here's an arc. That's the here real it comes one. around. So this dot right here is where Hanford is. Oh wow! And here's Puget Sound. And here, wow. can you see right here? This is this is uh, where the earthquake is going to go slush. This is going to be a big tsunami into here. This is going to be something that might translate in a ten mile down a uh, crack. Right to Hanford here. Ah. But then right here we have um, the Columbia River coming down. At any rate. So you're telling me as a crow flies, Hanford's only 10 miles from the coast? Oh, no. No, no. Hanford is way inland in the in the desert. And the okay. mountains are in between. But I'm saying that um, off the coast, only about 50 miles and in different places, it's going to be this, uh, this crack that's going to be the... Subducting of the Pacific right. I get that. We well, know what that means. It's going to yeah. shove this way. It's going to be an earthquake. That's going to be five minutes. So long. what's going to happen is the hamper is going to have a big gigantic earthquake. It's going to go. I'm not saying it's true, but I'm saying that this recent high probability. And, and if you look in the um, in that's this what the subduction zone Seattle, does. Seattle Times. Uh, article yeah. of November first, uh, two thousand. What are they thinking? Keeping a climate November first, two thousand. November first, two thousand and thirteen. <sighs> was it that she wrote that article on the uh, on this these waves, these these waves, these cracks wow. that are deep down that have so been Lisa, seen? So, Lisa, I hate to break your bubble here, but yeah. this is one minute and All forty right. seconds. Okay, left. let me give you the punchline. Okay. You want to know where Seattle is? Look at yeah. Puget Sound. Okay. And look right here. And in Puget Sound, on the right-hand side of this little stretch in of America's lower parts. Yeah. These are the San Juan Islands. Down here is Puget yeah, Sound. Yeah, put that on there, yeah. Let me put this going from Hanford. That Great little idea. Dot, and I'm going to go like that. Okay, so anyways, wow. if it could make it over these here mountains, these are the Cascades. If the wind was blowing that way like it did that weird day when Chernobyl blew and it went towards Europe, yeah. Look at it. Went that way. It went this way. When you see the map in the book, it went almost to Europe, totally. The yeah, wind I know. I've seen it. Sweden it did go to Scotland. Denmark. Like went to uh, the British Islands right. to Scotland and ruined it, their cattle. Right. I know. And they had to kill all the sheep and they, bury well, them. Well, they in still their can't waste sell their them. sheep. Yeah. And so that eat. could happen to this area. And I want to. Yeah. I know in my mind that that one is so cool. Oh, here we go. It's letting us do it for five more minutes. Okay. Let's, go. Thanks. Good. Let's do this. Part one. two. Okay. We're not good at being pressured, YouTubers. This is Lonnie Clark, Louisa Hamachek, back with the Nuclear Northwest News to shake and rock your socks to close down the Columbia Generating Station. That's right. Now let's look with at, the facts. Let's look at what happened in, when Chernobyl blew. It made this radiation, the red. Cross. Now, you see the little boot of Italy? This dark yeah. blue is the Mediterranean. Here's Spain, and there's British Isles. Um, here's Scandinavia and stuff. Here goes this, and look how it ruined Sweden and went over there right. to Norway and did all that. And it also went to Britain. I don't know why it's not showing it. <clears throat> Anyways, look at the cesium went across uh -huh. Asia, and off it went, and it went around the world. Now, here's Fukushima. Look how intense it is. But then we have coastal things showing up, but... Anyways, what do you mean that's Fukushima on the map? Well, you probably can't see it on that one. It yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, we can't see it, but you're saying that little tiny dot. I, I don't want to make any points about it because I can't use this map very well. It's not. But a, that's well not. Blown. That doesn't show any of the radiation. This actually shows the radiation. Doesn't the point it? of this uh, map from the book on radiation by Dr. Gale was about that uh, 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 Chernobyl was a big mess. It made a terrible amount of radiation go into the world when Dispersal it happened. Dispersal of it cesium. It exploded one. straight up. You know the difference is? 
They measured the fucking radiation. They haven't measured jack shit in Fukushima. You might be right. Let's they lied out. to us for three months and didn't even say there was nuclear meltdowns. Mm -hmm. Arnie Gunderson is on record saying there was no nuclear meltdowns because that's what he was being told. Okay, how many minutes do we have? We One have... Second. Let's look at this. No, two minutes. Okay, look here. Seattle's here. The earthquake's going to come here. There's going to be a nuclear... Yeah. I mean, there's going to be nuclear submarines that are going to be we sloshed. We get that, yes. Okay, into Seattle. Uh, nobody's going to give a darn about Hanford when all of this disaster has happened and there won't be anybody to deal with the radiation problem going on because there won't be a way to communicate. Like if you hear what happened at Fukushima, their cell phones didn't work from their big rescue place in Tokyo. On top of the fact that they are not going to tell us if there's a problem at Hanford. They didn't at any of these places to the local people. Right. They're not going to. Chernobyl? So... Chernobyl, neither Chernobyl nor uh, Fukushima did they tell Look. the local people when it happened. And they won't tell them for years whether they're being used as guinea pigs. That's the 90% rule. I don't know. There's just like no radiation that's good for us. Any amount can make uh, mutations that makes birth defects You know what the cancer. difference is? The difference is this conversation, Louisa. Low dose is not safe. Low okay, dose is acceptable. Low dose is acceptable. People. But they... Here, you want to hold it? Yeah, I'll, I'll just ahead. hold it while you say that. Low dose is acceptable. But um, being acceptable by the NRC and our government says that the, the benefit of having nuclear power is worth, for every two rads of radiation in the air, we get 32,000 known leukemias and cancers. 260 well, when do we get that amount of rads? children born with genetic defects. When do we get that number of rads, though? Uh, we are, we're, we've way surpassed it. We have, t we have at least 17 rads in the air right now. Yeah. So, but this is what they're saying. When they say we have a the safe dose, there's the safe dose means it's an acceptable risk dose. It's not safe. For ever, right now, okay, multiply the numbers. We have, let's say, 16 rads. So we have 8 times the amount. What's 8 times 32? We're accepting that much cancers. 8 times 265, over a million children born with genetic defects. So that we can have the benefit of having nuclear power. That's what we're saying. We're not going to shut them all down tomorrow. Be, and we're willing to let a certain population of the population, the most vulnerable, get sick so that we can have nuclear power. That's what they're saying. And that's the difference. This is what we need to really drive home. And everybody who says, well, there's a low dose. It's a low dose is acceptable. No, it's not. If I, I don't know in your culture, but in my culture, it's not worth uh, a million and a half babies being born with genetic defects so that we can have nuclear power. When we can have wind, when we can have solar for free without harming anybody, why? That's a moral question that needs to be asked. That's what I think. And I'm, I feel very strong. This is why I do this. <laughs> you know? Excellent. Well, I say that almost every time now on the radio show. On the Age of Vision radio show, which will be on tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock in the morning Pacific Standard Time. It looks like it's about to blink out. You see how it's blinking at the top right. there, Boo Boo? Okay. It's losing its energy because the battery is 